Hi guys and welcome to another Facehammer video about the Old World and the latest uh, Old World Rules Almanac article that's gone live on Warhammer Community today and it's talking all about USRs or Universal Special Rules. So I wanted to do a quick video going over the article um, and talking about the insights. If you've seen other videos in this series, it's gonna be very similar. Um, if you haven't, then please check out the playlist where all these videos are collected. Um, and going forward, we'll be doing full breakdown videos on the rule book when it is released and on the factions um, so please subscribe if you want to get more old world content I'm still going to be doing aos content um, thanks for everyone who's checked out the flesh eater video um, i will be resuming doing that list show that i talked about now that my cold has subsided and i can actually talk without um, snotting everywhere so let's get into the video and talk all about universal special rules in the old world so the article went live today uh, so I thought I'd do a video as soon as I could. Um, and it talks about Universal Special Rules. Now what they've done is they've taken the unit of Grail Knights and they've basically explained what their rules do. Um, and there are some little hints in here and obviously these rules will be their Universal Special Rules for a reason. They will apply to other units. So we've got their stats here. They're 38 points per model, which I think was what they were before actually. Um, the stat line looks very similar to what they were before. The base size is 30 by 60, which is obviously a new cavalry base size. Um, and you can see even in the picture, they're quite close together. So, you know, the old bases were really small. Um, I think they were like 28 by 50, uh, technically 25, but they were actually a little bit bigger than that. Um, three or more models in the unit. And it talks about they've got hand weapons, lances, heavy armor and shields. And the Bretonian war horse has barding. Now, a movement eight. Now, in the old rules, like armor used to reduce your movement, but because they're Bretonians, they didn't reduce their movement. I don't know if that's still the case, but we'll find out. So it's got the upgrades for the the uh, command. This is a bit unusual because usually what it used to be was the musician was half the points of the musician and the champion, but they're just seven points each, uh, which seems a little bit cheaper. I think before they were like 20, 20, and 10, so quite expensive for command. Maybe they've made them cheaper too because a lot of people didn't take command. They took like the, only the thing they really needed. Um says they can have a magic standard up to 100 points on the unit which is quite a hefty amount i mean they always they are an elite unit so these are like your special 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 knights they were a rare choice back in the old days so you can only have like one or two but some tournaments restricted rares to not having double because things like double hydras and that were very popular so whether or not that special rare core mechanics heroes lords are still there we don't know we haven't seen army list design maybe that's a article coming up um, so this is the Grail Guardian, which is a champion, may take a knightly virtue and magic items up to 50 points. So you can really load this unit out. You know, it could be like a 400 point unit really easily. You know, it's, it's, they are super elite. They've got the Blessing of the Lady, which is the Bretonian special rule. Of course it is. Um, close order, which is just means they're ranked up. Um, counter charge. I'll, I'll talk about these details when we get to them because they explain each one. Finest war horses, first charge, lance, living saint, swift stride, and grail vow. So, the weapon skill six, they said that they're basically really good. Um, armor, heavy armor, shields, and barded, they have a free up armor save. So, um, that's actually one less, I think, than it used to be because the heavy armor was a five up, shield would give you a four up. Mounted would give you an extra save, so that would be a free up. Then the body would give you an extra save, so it would be a two plus. So it looks like for whatever thing in there is, is I guess it's probably the mounting, um, is a free up save. So I think they used to have a two up. Uh, it says Lance is given plus two strength from the charge and armor bane. Now, armor bane's explained here. So it says if a model with um, this rule rolls a natural six when rolling to wound. You increase the armor penetration by the amount in brackets. So if you're on a six to wound, it's going to be AP three, not AP two. Um, I still like the fact AP is separate to your strength. Um, so I think that means you could have a high strength wound roll, but not very good at getting through armor. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting. They've separated that stack because that was intrinsically tied together. And that's opened up quite a bit of design space in terms of like separating units effectiveness in combat, whether you get just right more saves or, you know, you, you're not let, you know, you wound easier and they get a get better save or you don't wound very well, but they don't get a save at all. So it gives you stat design space, um, which is quite good. Obviously, plus two strength on the charge is pretty good. So you're going to be cavalry or monster. 
Um, and it can only be used when you charge um, and use your hand weapon if you haven't charged. So it says about 75 special rules in the game. Seems like a lot, but actually, um, I don't think it's that many because um, you'll soon get used to what they do. Um, and it basically says it collates a lot of special rules that lived in several places. So psychology, unit coherence, monster. So I think what they've done is they've moved more things because in the old book, you used to have like fast cavalry and there were rules for fast cavalry which applied to units with the fast cavalry, with they were like had a certain armor save and all that kind of stuff. Then monsters had their own rules. So what I think they've done now is being a monster doesn't necessarily give you things like stomp or a breath weapon or, you know, so I think what they're going to do now is move all those rules into universal. And if something is a monster, it might have that rule. So what, what it means as well, you can apply those rules to units that are not monsters so you can have non-monsters that stomp for example so it's quite interesting um that opens up again a lot of design space um but i i kind of like that um especially if they're all in one place as a reference i mean if you played star wars legion that's very much how that works you've got all the rules in one place they do separate weapon and unit rules out in that which is a bit confusing um it has got a little bit bloated but it's been out for years and new units new rules so there you go so you've got close order um so this is just set your rank up basically um and it says like stomp um were once under monster rules and now as a universal special rules it can be more deliberate which monsters have the rule which don't and also you could give it to non-monsters if you really wanted to if you had something like a i don't know like a screaming bell maybe that has a stomp rule because it grinds you up in combat i don't know if your bells are even a thing says here that you also have um, special rules for armies. So obviously for the Bretonians, you've got the Blessing of the Lady, which they always used to have, which is basically instead of going first, you can pray, which you pretty much always do. Gives you a six up ward. Um, it does say so you get a five up against stroke five or higher. I think that's the same as it used to be. And then you can lose it if you don't accept a challenge or you flee, things like that. So yeah, well, it does say as well, ground knights, they're all champions apparently, so they can all challenge. Um, so it says here close order counter charge is really this is really interesting so is effective against monsters cavalry and chariots it says if our ground knights are charged by units such as these so obviously not infantry but it says monsters cavalry and chariots um from a longer distance than their movement then they can spur their horses d3 plus one inches they both count as charging so obviously that's quite a big deal when you've got lances and you're in a lance formation and they've got a rule later on which is really strong so being able to counter charge another cavalry unit that's pretty big um it's going to make cavalry quite dangerous you're gonna have to get up quite close um to stop that because before you could roll like a big charge and get lucky and kind of pin them um, with like a flyer or something like that. I mean, there are probably still ways to do it. That's going to be quite an interesting mechanic. I'm not sure how that sequentially, how that plays in, because obviously the unit would move position. Um, so if they actually move forward a bit, maybe it changes their angles. So another unit then might potentially be drawn into their flank and maybe they can then immediately charge. So setting things up like that might be quite um, quite good how you wheel and how you align that's going to be quite important so i don't know until we get into the nitty-gritty of the rules how that's going to play out um it says finest war horses is a bretonian only rule um so it says that they can re-roll ones when they charge fleet or pursue before discarding because i think with cavalry or three dice pit highest or whatever so um that's usually how they used to work with swiss stride um if their first charge of the game makes contact, the target unit loses its rank bonus. That's horrific. Um, cavalry almost pretty good at going through infantry anyway, and Bretonians always used to get their rank bonus anyway, as well as the attacks down the side, so you could get quite a good rank bonus. How the new wedge formation works, I'm not 100% sure um, whether you get ranks or not, you just get more models to fight. But the fact you lose your rank bonus, that's that's pretty horrific for most armies um and it says it loses it until the next round of combat so pretty big it says lance formation allows bretonian knights to form their signature devastating charge formation of them a choice between this and close order so that gives you more models to fight basically for less um usually obviously when the eighth edition there was the 
the three models frontage and then deep and it was still a square and then you had ranks you could get rank bonus and this one looks like it's the original sixth edition um sort of wedge so that just means you're gonna get more models to fight but whether or not you get rank bonuses i, I don't know um so it's got living saints oh so i talked about this so they can issue challenges um swift stride adds three inches to your maximum charge and plus d6 to any charge flight or pursuit now i don't know whether that's it talks about discarding dice up here i don't know whether that's you roll an extra d6 and discard it or you actually add an extra d6 um maybe that that's the case but if you add a flat three inches as well that's pretty big um it's going to make cavalry quite scary i think um depending on how i think we already read about casualties and about they you know whether it, there was two versions one was you, know, you take casualties from the back but then the models that were killed couldn't fight because they're stepping up so if that's the case as well then cavalry are going to be pretty scary because you go in and obliterate the front rank especially when they got high initiative because obviously we know that getting charged you get an initiative bonus but you don't automatically strike first but i think they're initiative five so yeah the, the, these guys are going to be really really scary yeah initiative five um so don't really want to get charged by ground knights which kind of makes sense that's kind of what they're for right um it says they've got the grail vow um they're unaffected by fear and terror which we knew about in the past they get magical attacks which they had in the past the first time they fall fail break test they automatically fall back in good order so you can't like break and run them down as easy they're going to fall back in good order um which is quite interesting it says you can load them up with magic items knightly virtue a magic banner and it, it's got an example of each in here so it says the virtue of the impetuous so this was normally for your knights errant to have impetuous rule which i think means you had to charge unless you pass a leadership test and you had to flee you had to pursue sorry you had to pursue and you you couldn't like restrain and stuff like that so it makes you kind of like a bit gung-ho um whether or not those restrictions are in there because it says you get impetuous but obviously we haven't got the impetuous special rule um and it says the model in the unit increase its maximum charge by three inches so it's an extra three inches so is that six inches on top of your max charge um and it says when this model and unit makes a charge roll you can add a d3 modified to the result so plus another d3 so how that all adds up i don't know because it's talk about a maximum possible so maybe there's a cap so you can't charge like 28 inches but you you roll and then up to a lumbo that's what you can do but you might go so say for example if you roll 20 your max could still be 12 i don't know we, we, we don't know the detail um so it says in here so um you could also take this dragon slaying sword magic weapon so it says there's no ap but it gives you monster slayer again we don't know what monster slayer does maybe that's like killing blow but heroic killing blow um which we used to be like if you're on a six to wound it was wound you instant kill a uh, normal model but if it was a monster you needed a heroic killing blow um i can't remember if it was on the hit roll or the wound roll i think it was the wound roll um then you had the blazing banner um and you gained flaming attacks and obviously that was some regeneration got cancelled by flaming attacks um so whether or not there's anything in there i don't know um it says in here that universal special rules provide the variety character and granularity for the realm as violent and varied as the world of legend so it talks about Bretonian squires having move through cover open order skirmishes vanguard so that'll be like moving before the game peasantries something to do with panic not in knights probably skirmishes is going to be that loose formation i think there's probably something to do with open order as well move through cover I means you just don't do difficult terrain that kind of thing um so what's quite nice is when you get into the game what i used to like about it when you play someone you could say I've never played against Bretonians, for example. What do they do? Oh, I can pray. I'm going to go second and my whole army gets a ward. So that's like special to them. And then you can talk about like these guys get, you can explain what the Lance does. Then you can just say these get, you know, counter charge. These get this, they get that. They're swift stride. They go, and it's fairly obvious, like skirmishing units have the skirmisher rule, the way they're deployed or, or move through cover. That's kind of obvious. And then like, the the cavalry have swift stride it's kind of obvious so you can i think you could quickly 
explain your army and what it does in a very to someone who's never played against that before uh, and because you share the same rules they share pretty much i mean 90 percent of them you're gonna know oh i know what that means i know what that means so i'm quite looking forward to getting into the game and getting universal special rules back um i've been playing some other games with you use them and I, I much prefer it because you learn your army and then oh they've you know when i've been playing legion it's like they've got impact i know what impact does because i've got impact so i don't need to it, they're not called like you know stormtrooper accuracy and it's got its own special rule that's slightly different to i don't know like rebels defense or something you know it's like, it's like you did, they haven't made up stupid names for everything um which is basically the same thing so yeah that's the article in all its glory so um, i'm not sure what's up next because it still says universal special rules and updated the graphic um but it does say here that um, you have to complete your quest vow by buying the rule book sometime in New Year. So, I mean, yeah, fine. I mean, obviously, you're going to need the rule book. We will be covering the rules in more detail on this channel. I'm probably going to do a series like I did with Age of Sigma, uh, third edition, where I talk about like the phases and I just talk through. Because some people, they don't like reading lots of text and they want it kind of explained, and I'll do some examples. I just find this better as, a, as an aid because not only can you listen to it while you paint models rather than having to read separately. Um, so I always found that helpful when I was a kid. My granddad uh, recorded the Hero Quest Wars on the tape for me because I was a bit young to sit and read the book. I didn't have the attention span for it, but I could listen to the tape before bed or, or whatever and just listen and read along and I could got the rules that way. So I'll be doing the same thing for this. Um, so hopefully that'll be useful for you guys. Um, and obviously giving you some tactical insight as well alongside that. So it's not just going to be Man Reed's book, but it'll be why is that important or what makes that good and what units, you know, and, and that's kind of what you can expect from the channel going forward with old world content. It'll be very much aimed at kind of um, the more tactical aspects. Um, probably do some hobby content as well and, and maybe some lore because I'm quite interested to read the lore and find out how it fits in and go back through the old army books and look at the timelines and how do they marry up. I'm sure it's they've done a fantastic job. Games Workshop pretty tight on this sort of stuff. So, yeah, quite excited for that. But um, I will say um, I just started getting into Legion Imperialis and uh, trying to get hold of anything is a nightmare. So what I'd say, if, if you're on, if you're sort of thinking about getting into Old World, you're going to have to be fast as thing, I reckon, because I think this is going to go big. I think this is going to sell very, very well. And I don't think Games Workshop would have made enough um, because I don't think they would predict how popular it's going to be. But I think it's going to be very popular, especially when you've got years of Warhammer Total War um basically getting people like marinated for for the mass tabletop battle game and you've had what is it 2016 so you've had almost eight years of no official games workshop rank and flank game the old world's been blown up for a long time i think 2015 was the end times um so i i imagine there's gonna be quite a big influx of people wanting to get back into warhammer fantasy battle um sword and board rank and flank all that all that good stuff so i would say if you're excited about the game um i'm i'm i really hope there isn't massive fomo and backlog and delays because i think it really guts the game we had the same with horus heresy um legion imperialis looks like it's fallen into that trap as well um, and I really hope it doesn't kill the community before it gets started, really, because uh, the good thing about Warhammer Fantasy Battle is there are lots of stuff already around from back in the day. So you know, we've got our old collections and so on and so forth, so it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, I really do hope they make enough because, um, yeah, we really need people to be able to get hold of the products to play the game when they're excited that's kind of the the whole business model so um hopefully you can get hold of your stuff um so we'll see when it when it drops next year so um leading up to the christmas period um i'll be doing some more old world content obviously um i said i'm going to go back through the old books and do some kind of you know nostalgia videos so i'm very much planning to do that now my cold has subsided i will be doing that um so yeah but that's it for the article um if you want to check out any of the old world content on the channel please like subscribe uh we do have a discord i'll try and be a bit more active but you can join there there's a community in there so just go in there and chat to people um and i make some old world channels in there as well and um 
hopefully I can see you all back in the old world um, when it's officially here and we can all uh, move our movement trays around and get our lasers out. So uh, much looking forward to it. And uh, thank you very much for watching the video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Cheers. Goodbye.